to your computer. Okay, it's recording now. Okay, great. Um, and I think the Lord really gave very, very few commandments to us. He taught us a lot of stuff, but he gave very few like, thou shalt do this. And, you know, the, he gave, um, he said, love, love, you know, uh, the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. And then he said this, go ye therefore into the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? And lo, I'm with you always until the end of the world. I think, I think that, you know, too often we forget. So we, I will continue to remind us on a, on a weekly basis because this is what Occasion Mission is about. It is about the Great Commission. It is about encouraging, not whacking somebody to go, but, you know, let, let our spirits be aligned to the Holy Spirit because that's, that is why the Holy Spirit came. Holy Spirit came to convict all men of sin, not us, the, the world, the world. And the Holy Spirit is everywhere. So we need to go out and speak the word. And as we speak the word, people will hear God's voice as we speak his voice in our voice and that that is what evangelism is really all about and, and we need to be doing this and you know what i i just I, I said this last week and i again i'll say it isn't it amazing that when he gives us the great commission then he says i'm with you always right so you wonder when we are doing this isn't he there he already said it he's gonna be there and how can it fail if he's with it how can it fail he's in the boat so get into the boat, and the boat is the Great Commission. Um, okay, I wanted to just, uh, um, I, I wanted to run a quiz, but then the Lord kept uh, bringing these thoughts uh, over and over again. And so I'm, I am going to speak out what uh, basically the thoughts have been for the whole week uh, instead of the quiz, because I taught the quiz and I said, what are the, people, that, what do you want me to quiz on, Father, to remind um, the Occasion Mission community um, uh, on uh, goal setting and stewardship. And the Holy Spirit kept repeating this. So this is it, guys. Uh, Luke 9. Um, pa Pastor Jerry has been running through these verses as well, but it, you know, it's quite separate from him that, that it came out uh, this way. Um, and I, I just felt that, and this was the, the phrase that he kept repeating. And the, the phrase was, Jesus steadfastly set his face. You know what it means to set your face? Have you ever set your face? You know, like really say, I, you know, some people say, I, I set my heart. And then the next day, they change their hearts. I set my heart to love you. And then, sorry, I'm going to divorce you, you know, and <laughs> no such thing, right? Um, you steadfastly set your face. So you can, if you can just close your eyes and see Jesus' face at this moment, you can almost see how steely, you know, S-T-E-L, steely it was. It, it was like set, set in stone, set in flint. He set his face. And, and you know, you know, everywhere that Jesus went, except for, for, for Capernaum and, and Chorazin, right? Miracles, everybody loved him, everybody came running, you know, kids, everybody came running. But yet, now when he set his face, they go to a village in Samaria, and then guess what? They didn't receive him. You can't help but wonder why. So people must have, something must have happened on Jesus' face or his whole thing where he was one determined person. And this determination was so real that he is basically saying, that's it. The cross is in front. I'm going. And nothing is going to change direction, change anything for our Lord Jesus. And, 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 and that's it. And, and people, they may not know what it was, but it was that his, his heart was already there. So even if he was in the village, I'm not sure if he was really in the village, you know. And so I thought, wow, you know, Lord Jesus, you, you, you knew, you knew, you knew that as you were going, you already knew. Um, so, you know, Strong's Concordance basically say what it is, which, you know, establish. And I think of the word establish as, you know, God says, I shall establish. I mean, it's like, like this, you know, I'm going to do it. 
you can't change it. I'm going to do it. And I, I thought that was amazing. And then this word in Greek, which uh, Pastor Jerry can probably pronounce much better. I, I'll just say the English one, asterisen. I think that's how it is. I speak it more English. It was determined. So in all the various versions of the Bible, these are the four uh, words that come out. Okay, my hand's disappearing on Zoom. Never mind. Resolute determined steadfastly and he was prepared so he was prepared he was going and he is going to do this and nothing in the world was ever going to change him he was a man born to die for us and and this is it this is that last lap he ain't going to stop running so my question to the women, will you give birth to a child to die for another? I, I don't know if I have enough strength to do that. The next question, of course, will be, will you die for another? And Jesus says, no, I am resolved. I am resolved to die for you. Which then brings me to the next question. Are you? Are you resolved to live for me? This is what Jesus is going to ask. And I think that, you know, this, this question is something that we each have to answer in our own ways and how much we are going to do it. Um, I know that I backslid for 30 years. Another time I can share that, that whole testimony of how lost I was. Just this, um, today I saw one of the brothers who was very strong in Christ and he was very strong in Christ and he wrote on his Facebook that he's divorcing Jesus because he's now given way to new age. And it's so sad to read that because I was so steeped in new age and whatever age, and new age is old age and it's all nonsense age. And at the end, I told him, I wrote into his Facebook, I said, the path that you're going will only lead to death. I was there 30 years and there's nothing there, I can tell you. And I'm so sad to hear you say this because you were so strong and you were a leader and you know, so the resolve to live for Jesus, when I came back, I said, Lord, I'm hanging on this time. I ain't going to let go, you know. I know you've never let me go. You have never let me go, but I was never really resolved for you. This time, I am. And it's only by God's grace. I cannot do it in my strength. If I say I am resolved and hanging on, no, no. Every day I ask the Holy Spirit, you know, don't let me go. Don't let me go. This time, if I try to go anywhere, Whack the daylights out of me because I want to be here and because this is the safest place in the world and it's the best place in the world. I don't want to go anywhere. So my question to my brothers and sisters, are you resolved to live for Jesus? Because that's even before we start goal setting and stewardship, can we answer that? Then uh, this, this particular one, which uh, basically uh, Pastor Jerry has uh, shared in his, his own uh, uh, um, program. And he said this, and I just wanted to highlight verse 62, which follows from uh, Luke 9. Um, no man having put his hand on the plow and looking back is fit to, for the kingdom of God. And when Pastor Jerry said this, he also taught it that no longer are you just fisher of men. You are fisher of fisher of men. No longer are you just, you know, a follower, but you need to be also a shepherd because we are in those last days. We have to go get out there. We've got to, we've got things to do, but it's not heavy. His yoke is always light. If he puts a burden in your heart, you can go because he will give you the grace, the strength, the capacity and the competencies to finish whatever he has already tasked you with. So with that, um, I'm going to get this song played, but um, the problem with the, whatever you call it today, I, can you see? Okay, you can.
disobeyed Sin sin became a slave Now a perfect sacrifice would be required An offering must be made The sin debt must be paid So God and man can reconcile Yeah, Jesus gave himself for us, for each one of us. And if we were the one only person on earth, he would still have come. And that this was all planned even before the foundation of the earth, of the world, of the universe. He knew us. He knew us by name. He knew us even before we were formed. This is love. So um, I wanted us to do this because although Brother Stephen said, oh, it's going to be fun uh, and the goal setting, I, I think to set the stage is that this is really all about Jesus. It's all about the cross. It's all about everything that Jesus has done for us. 
And from that point, we do everything else in our lives for him because guess what? He deserves it. He deserves everything that we can possibly give him. And he will then bless us with even more to give him back with. I mean, that is the wonder of, of this walk, isn't it? So uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce Brother Stephen. Um, I, I know Stephen uh, through the Haggai Network. Um, I was standing up to say something at Haggai's meeting, you know, being me. And next thing you know, Stephen stood up and said, Sister, I want to see you after the meeting. I'm going, oh, oh, what did I do again now this time? And, and then uh, since then, you know, Brother Stephen is a very encouraging brother. And then, like I said, only two days ago, I found out that we attended the same church, you know, growing up. But I had left and I had gone to another church and then he came in. But we were saved in the same, uh, same church, baptized in the same church also. So I'll, he teaches emotional stability to churches in Malaysia and in the region. Um, and I'm going to basically let him now uh, take over uh, his, uh, uh, everything and he's going to basically... Tell us how to do uh, goal setting. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Norma. And uh, welcome everyone onto this uh, online meeting that uh, we have. This is a very special one because without COVID-19 and the pandemic, none of us will be coming together. So one thing good about pandemic is that it drives everyone into the Zoom so that uh, we are in the room together. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? And uh, I can see that uh, many faces from many different parts of the world. And uh, we have uh, Per Freebird, you are from Switzerland, yeah? You are so far away and you are so near. We are in the same room. <laughs> and uh, we have friends from uh, Pakistan, from many different countries. And many parts of the world, we are in pandemic. We are not able to come together physically, but while we are here, meeting face to face. So thank you. So good to see all of you. You are my friends. Are you my friends? Yes. yes. If you are my friend, please put out your thumb, <laughs> telling me that you are my friend. And today we are going to learn something together. I'm not an expert because I haven't reached my goal. <laughs> If I have reached my goal, I would have been in heaven, won't be able to speak to you now. All right, so today, let us relax and uh, let us learn together. Will it be okay? Yes, promise me, uh, uh, put out your reaction and say, clap your hand and say that, good, we are going to learn together and we are going to enjoy the night together, okay? Yes. Goal setting as well as stewardship is not something that is groomy or something that is uh, pulling a long papaya face, you know, becoming very serious and, uh, and don't know what to do. And uh, especially when it comes to stewardship, uh, when a pastor talks about steward, the first thing he put out is what? An offering bag. <laughs> so he want your money. Yeah? But uh, we're, today we are not going to do that. Yeah? So don't worry. Yeah? Uh, but uh, if you want to give me your money, you are all welcome. <laughs> okay, let me share screen with you, yeah? Uh, all right. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to, I'm going to on the, uh, my slide so that we are able to see the show together. <clears throat> okay, go setting and stewardship. This is a very big, big topic, and as I say, I'm not an expert, but I want you all to participate together with me, all right? Okay, let us, let us move on, yeah? Um, this is my family. Yeah, when I got married, I didn't know that I'm going to have five children. <laughs> See? <laughs> so, I didn't plan for it, but I know that God has something uh, for us to be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> so, we have five children. The other is Jonathan, the second one is Elizabeth, the third one is JC, the fourth one is Esther, and the fifth one is Jacob. Yeah, and uh, my daughter Elizabeth got married and I uh, gave birth to two siblings. So we have, um, we have uh, two grandkids now. Uh, so I'm young uh, at heart, yeah, right. 
So this is our, uh, let me think, uh, it must be our wedding anniversary with my wife. Yeah, this is our 30th anniversary where we actually <clears throat> celebrated in Bandung uh, when we have uh, training over there. And uh, I want to show you my spiritual journey and uh, so that you get to know me a little bit better. Yeah, I actually started from a very traditional uh, family whereby we actually uh, are Taoist or uh, folklore religion as a whole. So we are not just pure Buddhism, but uh, we are uh, all, almost everything jumbled up. Yeah? So, so young time, I always go to temple, but uh, then there was one time um, my father uh, forced me to pray when I was happily uh, running in the field and happily playing. And then suddenly he asked me that I must go back and, and uh, clean up myself and come and pray. And during that time, suddenly something struck me. And I saw uh, some uh, uh, pots and some uh, uh, chicken and so on lay on the table, a little altar. And uh, I asked my father, I said, is this our God? If this is our God and he, he's so small, living in such a tiny little house, and uh, we need to feed him. If this is a God, then I cannot believe him. Wow, I got smacked terribly, yeah? But that smacking bring me out of religion and I become an atheist. And I don't believe in anything, I just believe in myself. I believe that man must take on our own journey and journey through and grind our teeth and do whatever we can so that we can make it our way. And I like that song that was sang, I make it my way. <laughs> And that is my favorite song during the time when I was seen, yeah? But then, uh, there was a certain period of my time I began to think about life. And so, I joined Buddhism, and I became a very astute, a very staunch uh, Buddhist, uh, learning about the Ramayana text, and learning about the Trevada text. And I became so fully engrossed in meditation, as well as... Uh, talking about the mantras as well as about the Buddhist uh, religion as well as the Buddhist philosophy. But then there was one period of time I began to uh, see people die, especially one of the, my neighbor, he died. He passed away, he, he committed suicide because he didn't pass his exam. And then let me think about life. What is this all about? And uh, and that set my heart to search further, as Buddhism tells us a cyclical life. But since the person died and he cannot come back, then I see no cycles. I see that life is like a straight line heading towards a certain direction. And what is that? What is that direction? And, um, and I took, on, took off a book that was given to me by one of my friends when he shared with me Jesus. But uh, I was so rebellious during that time. I keep um, cheating back, but uh, he didn't give up. He gave me a Bible. And um, then I took the Bible. I start reading again until a text in John chapter 10, verse 10 says, I come that in my life and have it abundantly. Wow. That, re that sentence really struck me. Struck me so much. So hard. It is just like just now that song saying, yeah. He gave himself. He took my place and he gave himself. He died for me. Nobody are willing to die for us. Not even our friends. But he died for us while we are still his enemies. And that really struck me so much. And because of that, I gave my life to Jesus. And, and so I gone through a whole journey. After 20 over years, I became a Christian. And then because I, this newfound faith gave me so much joy, so much meaning in my life, so much of abundance of hope, peace, and joy that I began to share passionately with many people. So that began a journey of witnessing and sharing about his work. Not my work, but about who he is and what he can do to us, what he can do to change our lives. And so I began my journey. For many years, I've been sharing about Jesus. 
to many different people. Uh, this is a scene whereby I share with about 700 youth in, um, in China. And uh, we also start a, a movement or a journey of training people to do evangelism, a personal witnessing in a very simple way. We call it the EE way, evangelism explosion, both in Chinese as well as in English. And because of that, uh, we witness so many other people that come together like a family to share, to learn, to witness, as well as uh, to, to be able to transform by the gospel our lives. And that, that transformation become a witness and bringing this gospel, a simple gospel to many parts of the world. Actually, we have trained until today uh, when we count the number of countries over the last four years, we have actually reached out to almost 12 countries around Malaysia and Singapore and Indonesia. So you just imagine, we have already touching so much, but because of this pandemic, there's a some sudden, uh, not say stopping, but that caused us to think and readjusting ourselves. And during this pandemic, we are actually using Zoom to train many other countries in this evangelism explosion. So, you see, I was in Nepal just before the lockdown and uh, we met this monk. <laughs> and then he was sharing about his, uh, how his journey, you know, of purity. And uh, uh, two, my friend and myself, two of us began to share with them. What do you mean by purity? What do you mean by holiness? and how to attend this holiness by our own self. It is almost impossible. There's only one way, that is by God. And so in Nepal, we also began to train churches on how to do this evangelism easily so that you see young people getting excited over the gospel. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful to see young people getting excited, their lives change and they want to share Jesus with many others. And they, are, they got a tool. They got, a, they got help. They are able to do that. And they begin their life journey as what we are imparting our own lives to them. It's not that we are perfect. No, none of that. Yeah? We are humbly doing that because we know that Jesus loves them the same way as he loves us. We can't do much. We can do more to let him love us more. No, he loves us enough, even if we didn't do enough. And, and during one of the sessions, we took a taxi to the church. And this taxi driver, we began to share with him about the gospel. And after that, when we reached the, God, the church, he accepted the Lord. And our friend took his number because he wanted to come to the church the next Sunday. Isn't it wonderful? You see, life transformed and people wanted to find the truth. God take them on a different journey into a new life as well as into a new list of life, new list of goal, new set of values and new way of living. Not only himself, but also is going to bring in to his community and not only his family, his community, at the same time, it continued to rip us on. And that is our goal. Our goal is to make Jesus known and to know him as well. This seed is planted in our hearts. And I believe today, tonight, it's going to plant in your heart as well. All right? So if you want to receive this seed of God, that planted in your heart and bringing this message to many others. Today, we are going to do it. Goal setting and stewarding all that God has given to us so that we are enable us to do so. Are you ready? All right. If you are ready, let's get set and let's go. Yeah, you have gone through so many sessions, yeah? One of the first sessions is talking about biblical mandate where Ramachandran is sharing with us that it is such an urgent task. Why is it so urgent? Because every, every day people die. 
without Christ. Every day, people die hopeless. And then you go to leadership where Rachel uh, Ratha shared about how to become uh, courageous leaders, especially a woman in a man's world. And even Maimona is talking about leadership is about influence. You see, we don't shove the gospel into another person's throat. Nobody will listen to you. Nobody wants to listen just your word. But we are able to influence them by the way we live. By the way we lift up our faith, right? So we're talking then, Shabbos is talking about communication or with other faith and, uh, and sharing with us how to have this hope even in the face of opposition and communication. Uh, Paramita sharing with about how love conquers others. You see, the gospel is about love. It's about the love of Jesus, right? But just now the song sang, the song, he gave himself. He gave himself. Why Jesus gave himself? Because God loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Right? So today, we're going to talk about goal setting and stewardship. All right? Now we do some activity together. Yeah? All right? Now, if you're in your home, I believe you're on your table and you can take a piece of paper. Yeah? Take a piece of paper like this. Take a white piece of paper and then fold it. Divide them into two. Yeah? Divide them into two. Right? And then stay into two. And then on one piece of the paper, draw a heart. Right? One piece of the paper. Draw a heart shape like this. Right? Draw a heart shape like this. On the other piece of paper, draw a big question mark. Draw a big question mark like this. Okay? Got it? Done? Good. Right. So, uh, please do it. We are going to use it afterward. Yeah? So, on a piece of paper, you draw a heart shape. Yeah? Draw a heart shape that you like. Uh, and then on another piece of paper, draw a big question mark. Why we do that? Ah, uh, when you love something, you write it on that piece of paper that has a red heart, right? When we, when we, brought, as we go along this session, whatever you like, maybe just a word, or sometimes the Holy Spirit tinkle you, wow, suddenly a light bulb, yeah? Write it on the heart. If, as we go, proceed, then certain questions come to your mind. It may not be a question about the subject. It may be a question that you ask yourself. It may be a question that you want to explore further. Yeah? Write it down on the piece of paper. They have the good question. They have the big question mark. Is it okay? All right? Got it? Okay. Now I can't see you. You have to do it yourself. <laughs> if you have done it, you just uh, put out your thumb or write it on the reaction, clip your hand. Yeah? All right? When you do it, after you have done it. All right, got it? Okay, we proceed, yeah? Now, take another piece of paper. Take another, another white piece of paper, yeah? And then, draw a man carry a heavy object. On the piece of paper, draw a man carry a heavy object. Okay, start now. And after that, show me your picture. Sorry. Okay, got it? Have you done? Have you drawn? Have you drawn the picture? One minute. Just one minute, yeah? Don't take too long. Draw stick, drawing can already. Don't need to draw nice one, yeah? Got it? 
If if you have done, say yes, right? You have yes. done, put on the say yes or put on the chat box, say yes, I've done. Yeah. Done, say it, huh? D O N E, done. Ah, right there. All right? Got it? Good. Romina, got yes, Suka, yes. Liu, yes. Yes, Pauline, yes. Sanjay, good. Yes, Babu, yes, good. Yes, dear. Ellery, yes. Norma, done, good. <laughs> Any more? Any of you have done? Yes, good. All right. Good, Deborah. Mm. Yeah, Humphrey Bird, yes. Good, Ross, yes. Dario, done. Grace, yes. Lina, yes, good. <laughs> Anil, fantastic. Right, any more? Done, okay. Uh, show your picture to Norma. I don't know whether I can see it or not, uh, but um, yeah, show your picture. Uh, all right, I just stop sharing and then. Uh, yeah, I think some people are copying your pictures, brother. Ah, yeah, I, but it's I okay, they're the all pic great pictures. One looks like an nah. ant. Brother, oh, the picture look like an ant with a field. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I, I, I let the cat out of the cage. <laughs> yeah, you let the cat out of the oh, cage. Yeah. Yeah, so I can't see the, Pastor yeah. Jerry's though. I uh, want to see his artistic talent. Nah. How so Pastor tiny. Jerry. <laughs> can yes, I, see yes. his I can see his <laughs> question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yes. Okay, now. Anyone draw like that? <laughs> a man carry a heavy object on the back. Only bike. you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Only me, huh? Anybody draw like that? <laughs> Is it very difficult? That looks like uh, mine. <laughs> that looks like yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we are supposed to carry a heavy object, right? <laughs> no. You see, Jesus asked us that, telling us that our yoke, his yoke is easy, uh, not, not this big stone that is before us. Now, okay, you put that aside first, yeah? You know, every year, at the beginning of the year, my neighbor always celebrate Chinese New Year. And then he always have this roasted, beautiful, delicious lamb. Yeah? So one day I called my uh, son and a few friends and said, hey, we must go, you know, we must taste this lamb. But the whole problem of getting the lamb is what? Can you guess? What is the problem of getting this lamb? You see, barbecue or roasted lamb, grilled lamb, they have to take a long time, right? It takes at least four to five hours to grill it. So you have to wait a long time. And we have to wait until almost middle of the night. Yeah? Not only that, there's another thing. There's a long queue all the time. <laughs> People queue out. And then, because they have to cut section by section, by the time you reach there, yeah, you see, you have to cut section by section, so by the time you reach there, maybe no more, you have to wait for the next. <laughs> and then we have to wait again and again and again. So my friend and my son said, oh, forget about it. You know, you have to wait too long. Now, I said, no, let us wait. We have already been here, you know. Let us, and the lamb looks so good. In my mind, I only aim for the lamb. But in their mind, what they see? They see queue, long queue. They see barriers to reach the lamb, right? Yeah. So you see, when we talk about goal, you see goal or you see barriers. You see, it is something that we don't need to define too much. Yeah? Uh, we, 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 all of us have some ambition when we're young. Right? Do you have? Yeah. And at the same time, as we proceed on through lives, we also start setting goals that we want to reach. I want to get an MBA. That is part of my goal, right? Or my objective. I want to find a good wife. Well, that is another goal. 
I want to raise out a nice, beautiful family. That's another goal, right? I want to build a church, and the church must reach at least 2,000 people. Wow, that's another goal. By when? By 2030. Wow, big goal. Huh? What about your goal? But then along the way, as we proceed to reach the goal, we find a lot of barriers. The thing is, we see the goal or we see the barrier. Uh, that is something. Huh? So stewarding your resources to reaching goal is a very important topic, which is seldom talked about. But this is a very important topic for all of us. So today our learning objective is to see how to do goal setting, how to plan, how to execute the process, and how to manage resources to reach the goal. All right? We may not be able to do all, but uh, I promise you we are trying to do the best. Right? Now, have you seen this, hear this song before? K Sarah Sarah by Doris Day. Anyone have, have heard about the, the song? It. Yeah, you have heard the song. Put out your thumb. Yeah, put out your thumb. I want to say how many of you have seen, have, have known this song. You are asking how old we are. <laughs> you are right, man, no man. <laughs> yeah. This song, I, I, I know about this song when I was a teenager, yeah. Or not say teenagers, when I was uh, in my early youth, yeah, in my early youth. This song was very famous. Let us listen to the song, yeah. Okay, K okay, Sarah Sarah, whatever will be will be. The future's not ours to see. Whatever will be will be. Is our life like that? Sometimes I think my life can be like that. Yeah, when I was young, it was like that. Every day goes. It morning, wake up, having breakfast. After that, change. After that, go to work. And then after that, we were, we are back home, tired. Then after dinner, watch TV, read newspaper, sleep. The next day, wake up, do the same and the same and the same old, same old. And then we may not have the plans because whatever will be, will be. What can you plan? You know, Many years ago, I have been working in a, in a management and I have to do budgeting, forecast and budgeting. I still remember in 2008, 
we started a new company and I have to do a big, gigantic um, forecast and budget because uh, the company is a very big company with about 1,000 members. Yeah? So we took almost four months from September onwards until January to do the budgeting and forecast to make sure that all the data collected are correct. So after that we did, and you know what happened? 2008, beginning of the year, we come up with our budget. 2008, June, what happened? June, July, August, I think. What happened? Suddenly, there is the big mortgage issues in US. And then after that, the whole economy crumbled. Not only in US, and it ripples through the whole earth, whole world, whole economy world. And there, the, everyone is affected. And you know what happened to the budget as well as the forecast that we did? It go into the blue file. You know where's your blue file? There's your dustbin, right? Everything thrown in, useless. After spending four solid months of sweat and blood and tears, and it just go. And so a lot of people think, if I were to plan that hard, how can I see the future? You know, let's forget about it. K, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. Right? Is it the life that we want to be? Is it the life that God asks us to be or wants us to be in that way? No, it is not. Yeah? Even this pandemic, there's a lot of people say, wow, because of the pandemic, let us forget about uh, planning. But again, the same thing happened. Let us draw a line. Now find a piece of paper, draw a line, yeah? Draw a solid line across the piece of paper that you have, right? Okay, got it? Done? All right, please uh, do. If you do, um, unfortunately I cannot see you uh, personally, otherwise I will uh, uh, reward you. Uh. <laughs> yes, draw. After that, you draw another thing, right? Take this as a starting point, yeah? Do it as a starting point, and then draw this column. 0 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30, 31 to 40, 41 to 50, 51 to 60, 61 to 70, 71 to 80, 81 to 90. Got it? Ah, divide, divide that line into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nice slot. You want to divide into 100 slot, uh, 10 slots also can, yeah? But divide it first. Got it? All right? What, does, what is it? Do you know? Anyone want to guess? Are you all with me? I can start from 50, from 60 onwards. Oh, you know. <laughs> uh. Oh, so you know that is the age. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You don't need to draw so much. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that is your age. And then what you can do is, where are you in your earthling abode now, right? So you do a, uh, you can, you can uh, draw where it is. You see, mine is there. <laughs> yeah. So if mine is there, that means uh, if I were to live up to 90 years old, how far am I? Wow. It's getting very near, right? It's getting very near. Now write down what goals you have accomplished, all right? On the same piece of paper, write down, what goals have you accomplished? Don't need to write big sentence, huh? just write, uh, I got degree, uh, uh, graduated, uh, finished, right? Family, uh, how many, yeah, you know? Or go, wow, I've, I've done this, I've climbed Mount Everest. <laughs> Yes, no, ah, or go, yeah, what is your goal? What have you accomplished, right? Okay, next, what would you like to achieve next, right? If your, if, if your arrow is here, I have to write, what do I want to achieve next from 62 years old until possibly 80, yeah? maybe 75, you know, beyond that, I don't know whether I'm still alive or beyond that, I don't know whether I'm still able to do anything. 
right? So while I'm still able, what would I like to achieve next? Right? Okay, write it down. Good? All right. So next question, very important question. Where is your final destiny? Of all these goals that you want to achieve, where is your final destiny at the end of it? Yeah, huh? so this is important. You see, when we set goals, we have to set it to have an end in mind. Where is that final destiny, right? And that is an important question. If you want to share gospel with others, this is a very good question. Ask people, wow, where are you today? What have you achieved? You know, what would you like to achieve? What is your final destiny? Yeah, and you, you can get a lot of good answers from there, yeah? All right? We have the choice to live life. First, either by design or if not by default, yeah? K Sarah Sarah by default or by design, you really want to achieve, you really set it on. So God wants our life to be by design. He designed it for us. Yeah. And then after that, when we get to know him, we begin to open up our lives to him. And as we open up our lives to him, you find out that his Holy Spirit continues to guide you along destiny and moving you towards the destiny that he has set and that destiny he wants you to take it into your heart so that destiny is owned by you not just by god it's owned by you so it is life by design who designed it god god designed it but that design becomes yours as you move along okay good this is my life journey. Graduate, 1982. Got married in 1986. Now I have five children. Ending my marketplace career and engaging full-time in ministry. Now, where am I going? To heavenly abode. A wedding for the marriage of the Lamb. Isn't it wonderful? A wedding for that grandiose feast of the Lamb. A wedding to see the great white throne of God, awaiting that God together with Jesus Christ, with all the saints, with all of you, one day when you come to the same abode and we are praising God, we are worshipping Him, and we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Isn't it wonderful to have a day like that? So, if we are going to talk about a day like that, then what is the present time? What is the present trials? What is the present suffering? It means nothing, right? It's just a passing by. It's just a process that we need to go, that we need to get through. So, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 to 5 says, God says, yeah, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. What it is? In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship, to Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. So, you see, sometimes we take God, we take lives in such a grunt, greeting our life, grinding through. You know, if we have, don't have God, we really grind through. But when Jesus came, what did he do? He said he chose us. God chose us before even we know him, before even the creation of the world, before even everything is formed. And even during that time, he wants us to destine for that same place to be with him according to his will. And the whole of our lives that go through is a workout. A workout to be what? To be separated by the, from the world and to be holy and blameless. To be holy and blameless. And out of that, 
Why he do that? It's because he loves us so much, right? For we are God's handiwork created in Jesus Christ to do good work with God, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. So God has already destined, designed us to come to him and design us by grace through the faith that is planted, the seed that is planted in our heart, so that he transform us to be like him, so that we are able to perform as well as to do the work that he has set for us. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it nice? Yeah. So you see, goal setting is not about us trying to think about or trying to trying to condense from all the journeys as well as all the experiences that we have. No, it is about finding His will in our lives and living out the will according to His good pleasure. If God is so pleased with our lives, how can we not be pleased with our own? Am I right? So you see, when we are talking about God's setting and uh, and sharing of Christ and, uh, and uh, performing the biblical mandate and so on. It's as though that it's so humongous the work that sometimes we crunch as well as we tighten our face. But here it is not so. You are talking about Jesus Christ. You are talking about the good works that He wants us to do. And it is not of our own. It is the depositing of the goodness that He has for us when we are in Christ, when we are birthed into the new. Right? And so, we go on again. Yeah? Jesus replied to the disciples, as well as to the people that inquire of Him, what must we do to perform the work of God? And Jesus said, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. To believe in the one he has sent. Isn't it easy? It looks easy, but it's never easy. How many of us can say that we really know God? In the Bible, when you're talking about know, means that it's not just about a name, not just about the person's occupation or what he has done. No. To know means I have a close, intimate relationship with Him. Isn't it a simple goal? Our life's goal is simple. See, God didn't give us a very complicated work. Yeah. The Pharisees make it very complicated. The religious leaders make it very complicated. Sometimes the church also makes us very complicated. We have to do this program, that program, and so many other programs. But actually, the only work that God asks us to do is to believe in the one He has sent. Believe in Jesus Christ. Believe in God the Father. Have that intimate relationship. A simple goal. To know Him and to make Him known. To know Him and to make Him known. And if tonight, if you say, wow, I don't know what goal that God has given to me. This is a simple goal. Put that on your paper saying that Put that in your heart and say, the simple goal that God has given to me as what Jesus say in verse 29, that is to know him and to make him known. Now let us look at Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 said, Not that I have already reached the goal, or am already fully mature, but I make every effort to take hold of it because I also have been taken hold of by Jesus Christ, right? Paul, before his convers conversion, what happened? What is this? his life objective? His life objective is hold on to the law, be faithful, adhering as a profession of a Pharisee, teaching the law, eradicate any obstacles that run contrary to his belief, right? So that's the reason why he persecuted anybody who believes in Jesus. What is the result? The result is that he is joyless, stressful, angry, self-righteous, murderous, hopeless. Now, brothers and sisters, friends, if we are bound by a set of law, 
and trying to live it up and trying to let other people live up the same, we will be the same as Paul before his conversion. And then after that, you see, because of that, he witnessed Stephen's death and give the approval when persecution in Jerusalem start. And Paul, and so during that time, that was his name, began to destroy the church, began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he drag off men and women and put them in prison. And then the conversion came when he was on the road to Damascus, trying to go to Damascus with a letter from the chief priest and to draw as well as to catch all these um, people of the way who believe the way and then put him into prison and persecuting them. But uh, on the way, he met Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ asked him, so, so, why do you persecute me? And that is his big conversion. And after the conversion, what happened? Acts chapter 26, verse 16 to 18, saying about his conversion, I'm Jesus whom you are persecuting, the Lord replied, for I have appeared to you to appoint you as servant, as a witness of what you have seen in me and what I will show you. So here, what is the goal of Paul after conversion? He began to be appointed, appointed as what? As a servant, as well as as a witness. To do what? To be sanctified by the Lord Jesus so that he is being sent, sanctified and sent to do what? Open the eyes of those people who are in darkness so that they can turn from darkness, from sins, and entering into an inheritance by faith. Wonderful. What a, what a super goal after his conversion. What can we learn from here? What is our conversion experience? And after the conversion, what comes to your mind? What the Lord wants you to do? Is it the same as Paul? There's a total turnover. There's a total change. He become a witness. Not because he's he is forced to, but he's compelled by love to do so. He's sanctified so that he is able to lift up the life of that God has designed him. And, and he, was, uh, he was endowed with the possibilities, the strength, the, the power, as well as the gifting that he's able to use the gospel to open the eyes of those who heard the gospel, to turn them from darkness, from sins, so that they are able to receive an inheritance by faith. Wow, when I, when I read this, uh, Acts chapter 26, uh, uh, during last year, uh, when we do these uh, Bible studies on Acts, this part of the Bible keep me thinking all the time, what is my conversion story? After I accepted the Lord, I accepted the Lord when I was uh, in 1981. And since then, there are so many things happened in my life until today. I have gone through something like 40, uh, 43 years possibly. And during these 40 over years, what has happened? What did I do? Did I do as what Paul has done? And so, you see, what are the big goals of Paul's after conversion? He said, I'm not disobedient to the heavenly vision. He tell King Agrippa, he's not disobedient. And he won that everyone in the region of Judea, in all the Gentiles, that he's able to declare the gospel so that they are able to repent to God, performing deeds worthy of their repentance. This is his goal, the goal of his life. When he wrote the book of Romans, he is already an old man. Yet in the, when he was all in prison and writing to the Rome, 
while he was, uh, I believe he was in Ephesus during the time when he wrote the letter of um, the, uh, or Colossae during the time when he wrote the letter to uh, in Ephesus, yeah, when he wrote the letter to Rome, uh, to the Romans believers. And he said what? He said, I long to come to you so that I may impart some spiritual gifts. Yeah, I long to come to you so that the Gentiles as well as the Jews are able to hear the gospel and able to know the surpassing goodness of that gospel, of that love of God, so that nothing can separate them, even though they may undergo big trials as well as persecution. And this is his goal. So consider, what is your life's objective before conversion? What is your life's goal now after the conversion? Right? If you have paper, write down the questions or you can take a snapshot of the questions. And then in the quietness of the night, bring these questions before God and ask God to show you what is your life's goal. Sometimes I do this calling journey yeah, to know how God prepare me, release me to fulfillment. And this is Paul's timeline. We don't look at that. Yeah? Now, calling, sometimes we, we want to see what calling is all about. And uh, I just give you a little bit of a, a view. Yeah? You see, our goal can be divided into two parts. One is the doing call. We call it task or role oriented. And the other one is being called. That is your life message, right? Now, Moses will become, let's see Moses. Moses was called to what? Deliver, right? Moses was called to deliver the people, the Israelites from Egypt so that they can come out to become a free man. And as the free man, they are able to worship God. So Moses is called so that the, you, the nation can become form, can form. And as a nation form, law is given. That is his doing call, his task, as well as his role. What about his being? You see, God took him 40 years in Egypt, learning about the ways of Egypt. And he is very proud of himself. He is very intelligent but he killed someone. But he got a sense of righteousness and God wants to remove that sense of self-righteousness, sense of self-made uh, man and put him 40 years in the desert. And after the desert, God said, time is ready. You are ready to do my bidding. And, and what happened after 40 years? He said, I cannot speak eloquently. He became so humble. The Bible says he is the meekest man on earth. He totally depends on God. What about David? David was called to unite the kingdom of Israel, the north and the south together. But the being called is that he is a man after God's own heart, right? And what about Jesus? Jesus knows his role is to come, to die, to be resurrected, to be ascended, so that he can redeem the people in the world through his death, and through his resurrection. What about his being called? His being called is to be with the Father and to make the Father known. What about Paul? Paul said he's apostle to the Gentiles. Salvation by grace through faith, right, is the being called. Paul know very well that because of grace, because of grace through faith, otherwise he is nothing. He said, I'm the worst sinner of all. Yeah. Even though he has done so much. Now, sometimes when we do so much, we boast about it. But Paul didn't boast about it. He said what? He said, in the end of the day, my goal is to reach the crown whereby Jesus prepared for me. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. What about you? What is your doing call? What is your being call? Yeah, please write it down. Yeah? Write down yours. Don't write down your friend or your wife or your children's one. Write down yours. We are only expert of our own self. Right? Okay. 
Next. So Paul referred himself to the apostles of the Gentiles. For he him, for in him you have been enriched in every way with all kinds of speech and with all kinds of knowledge. Yeah. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. What does he say here? He says that when God called us, we are enriched in every way. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, sometimes we want to do something and we say, no, la, this is not for me. I only know so little. I only have so little. I only in my tiny little cocoon, my, my tiny little village, my, my, I, I came out from a very humble home. Actually, I came out from a village, from a very tiny little village. But God, after he made me, when I made God, he changed me. He said, yeah, I'm rich in every way. Yeah? In efficient. Uh, and then, after that, what else he said? He said, you do not lack anything. You do not lack any spiritual gifts. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5, verse 7, he said, we do not live at, lack anything at all. We do not lack any spiritual gift. So, dear friends, dear brothers and sisters, we don't lack anything. God has enriched us, right? God has enriched us. Our calling is evidence through the gifts of grace that God has given to us. Now, if you want, you can take a piece of paper and draw this table, or you can take a snapshot. What is your spiritual gift? What education and knowledge that you have already acquired? What are the abilities, talents, skills, and capabilities that you have? And what are the treasures, possessions, and material resources that you have? Right? Write it down. You know, what is that? What is the abilities that a normal, a ordinary, that a, that a normal person has? You know how many abilities? Give a guess. Give a guess how many abilities that you have. Some people say 50, some people say 70, some people say only five. Yeah, how many do you think? 100, very good. Any more? Any others? Pauline said 100, very good, yes. Any others? Any other number? Waiting for your numbers to come? We're well, going to end very soon. <laughs> yeah, you know how many? Actually, if you, if you check out, yeah, the total number of abilities, skills, and capability that we have is almost about 700. 700. So just imagine, God gave us so much. Building or Noah's Ark, is it possible? During the Noah's time, building the Noah's Ark is not an easy feat. It took many, many years to do that, right? Yeah, try to work out a plan to build a normal up using a goal setting method, right? You, 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 you remember you saw this, especially those who are very uh, curious yeah, about this. And this is built in Kentucky by a man called Ken Ham. Yeah, this is a full-size version of Noah's Ark. Yeah, and this is already completed actually. It's a very massive job. And it cost 100 million to build. So just imagine Noah's built his up. I don't know how much money and so on, but he built it as God has given him the dimension. And you know, today we have to use 100 million US dollars to build this up. It takes him a long time, and it is in Kentucky. It's possible, right? What about going to the moon? A lot of people think that this is way out. Not possible. But in July 1969, President Kennedy is challenged to put a man on the moon before the decade is out. And he did it. And now there are many people that have already gone. What is seemingly impossible goal that God is putting into your heart? What is that? Huh? According to Joshua's project, huh? there are about 16,598 people groups in the world. 16,598 people's group in the world. 
7,000 over are still unreached. Right? Now consider this number. They are all, the, all together about 44,000 Christian denominations in the world. 14 for every unreached people's group. There are about 700 million evangelical Christians in the world. 225,000 for every un unengaged people's group. There are 4.5 million Christian uh, congregation, right? For every, and every unengaged group can share 1,451 congregation. There are 4,900 Christian foreign mission agencies in the world. 1.5 agency for every unreached, unengaged people's group. But are they engaged? Are they engaged? And what happened to what we do? Think for a moment. How to set the above, how the above research influence your goal setting at all? What specific action I would like to take? How I measure my reach? Am I working in the area? In terms of time, talent, resources? How to craft an achievable goal and work on it? In what ways can I make it to become a way of my life? How long should I be engaging? What time frame am I willing to commit? Yeah, there are seven strategic elements that is stewarding towards reaching goal. I call it this, yeah. First, we must know our local predicament. What is a local challenge in our own place? Next, what is our collective potential? Not just our own, but our group, our community. What is the collective potential? What is the collective gifts, talents, resources that we have? What drives you? What is the collective energy in your group, in your community, in your church, the apostolic spirit? Right? Uh, think about this. Right? Together is what is our mission? What is our mission? What are we doing here? What are we supposed to do? What, why we do it? They define our values. Why we do it? How we are doing it? That is our mission strategy. And what do you mean by you're having a success in life? When you have these seven things together, you reach your goal. You are able to reach your goal. Local predicament, collective potential, apostolic spirit, missional mandate, missional values, missional strategy, and how you measure, they give you a vision proper to reach your goal. All right? Okay. So, every day, let us think about it. What are we doing here on earth? That is our missional mandate. Why are we doing it? That is our values that speak about our motives of doing something. And how are we going to do it? That is our map or our strategy of doing it. And what measures your success? That is your mark. And that will give us a real goal in our lives, a real vision proper, right? Where is God taking you? What milestone you need to achieve to reach your destination? Right? There is a there, I just take another four or five minutes to show you how this OKR works. OKR means objective key results. I'm using this for the past years to achieve my goal as well as my objective. And I'm do, using this to achieve what I have, what we are doing in Haggai as well. Right? So how to do it? First, you define your mission and your vision. See? So just now the seven strategic elements are very important. So to let us define our mission as well as our vision. And from there, we divide into what is our strategic goals. That's our objective. Yeah? So from there, you, you look out your objective. And from the objective, you think about what to do. What are your tactics? What are the tasks that is needed? So I did this in Haggai. Yeah? What is our vision? The vision is that every nation redeemed and transformed through the gospel of Christ. And what is the strategic goal? 
Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. So the, how to reach that is to make disciples of all nations. Yeah? Objective, finding the best people for the best job, for the job, and giving them an experience that will change, equip, and motivate them forever. That is the tactics and the task. Okay? Got it? So you can actually build this uh, on your own. Right? And so this is the table that I put up. Yeah? As when I do it. Okay? You see? So I have objective. I have key result. Then I have the current situation. At the same time, I have the tactics and the task at hand. Right? Then I build objective one. What do I do? Objective two. What should I do? Then objective one, I say, oh, form an organizing committee to do the tactics as well as the task. Then I do funding, current balance, race, yeah? advertising, market leaders, lobby for the right participants. Yeah, who are they? Yeah, then I write it down. Right. So this is a is a is a things we are talking about. Not only just about reaching the goal but the methods of reaching there and how to know that we are so richly embraced by God and given by God that we are able to steward whatever things that he has deposited in our lives to reach the will and the goal that God has set for us. Amen? Come, let us pray as we end here. Oh, no, we're not, not ending uh, yet, uh, Brother Stephen. Oh, I, not I, ending yet. Not okay. ending yet. Well, let I me pray for you. you. Okay. Please pray. And, uh, but I just want to make sure people don't run away. I just have oh, a little okay. bit more. I just need another five more minutes. All right. Okay. People. Let All us right. pray. Uh, pray. Father, we want, to, we want to pray for your blessings upon every one of us that come to these sessions. And Lord, as we as we think about the goal, we realize that it is not how we sweat and, and uh, tears about it, but it is about what that you are impressed upon our heart and giving us, Lord, the visions as well as the dreams and also the, the goal that set before you before even the beginning of the world and you are giving it to us when you transform us, convert us to become children of God, as we are daughters and sons of God, as we are prince and princess in your kingdom. Amen. Father, we pray and ask of you, Lord, that you help us, Lord, to steward, to manage, as well as to utilize, Lord, all those things that you have given to us Amen. for your kingdom that your kingdom will be expanded, especially during these end times. As we see the age is coming to a close. Lord, there are still so many people have not heard about you. There are still so many people's group are still beyond our reach. And yet, Lord, actually the church as well as the whole Christendom are full of resources. Help us, Father, to utilize to apportion, to, to manage, so that, Lord, everybody can hear, till everyone hears your voice. Thank you, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Thank you brother, for brother Stephen. With us. Thank you. Wow. Wonderful. Um, okay. Anybody see me? Okay, hi, I'm back again. Thank you, Brother Stephen, for that. Uh, I didn't know you're going to share that. It was wonderful. I thought you're going to come up with one whole long list of stuff for me to do. And I'm going like, ah, I'm thinking already. No. <laughs> but it was. Uh, thank you. It was. It was uh, really wonderful to to hear that from from you. And um, so I am going back to my screen share, which I hope you guys can see. Rovina, I, I think Rovina will tell me whether you guys can see. Rovina, you can see. Thank you. Yep. All right. Can you guys see the screen? You can't. Because you guys can only see me at the moment. So I got to share. Can you guys see the screen now? Yes. 
can see the screen. Okay, thank you, Brother Stephen. Okay, as you have seen from uh, both uh, Mami's uh, talk last week and uh, I think also uh, Parameter's talk and all that. So this is really just a Haggai taster. And uh, I really welcome uh, you to WhatsApp me if you're interested in the in-depth course because I think we are, our brother Stephen can take us through the goal setting in detail. I will read out to you because interestingly, I just found it this morning, what I wrote in, in Haggai when I was there. Uh, this is what I wrote, my own personal mission statement. I wrote, I will dedicate my life to Jesus and commit all my resources for his kingdom. I will use all that I have, my past failures and successes, my strength and my weaknesses, my capacity and breath to serve Jesus. And, and that's what I wrote as a header. Um, to, to my personal mission statement out of um, Haggai. And Haggai absolutely, totally changed my life. And I, I can, it was an answer to a prayer that I didn't even know I prayed. And, and I think God caused me to remember uh, the vision that he gave me and caused me to remember the prayer that I prayed. And then he put me into Haggai and, and, and that was, you know, all the changes that happened. So if you're looking um, to ask uh, the Lord, what do you want me to do? Uh, what is the goal? Where am I going? Occasion Mission actually was birthed at Haggai in 2017. And I therefore would ask you guys, if you guys are interested, um, to just WhatsApp me, and then I will sort out the logistics of getting you into the right program. So what is super powerful about Stephen is that, my goodness, it's a simple goal. I was expecting a laundry list, right? And for a woman, laundry list is bad, bad news, bad, bad news, <laughs> too many. But it's just to know God and to make him known. And then I thought, wow, isn't that such a grace message? It's such a grace-based message, which essentially also has been what uh, uh, Pastor Jerry has been uh, talking about. Really, it's out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. Because evangelism is just that, that you can't stop that man, uh, you know, uh, the, the man from the gatherings, right? He had to go, he could go tell because the Lord asked him to do it. But it's really because the Lord had done of what the Lord had done. And likewise, you know, the, the, the woman who was uh, seated by the well and, and when, when Jesus said, you know, ask her. And then she, she was the first evangelist. She can't stop talking about Jesus. Come, 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 you know, come see Jesus. And, you know, if you know Jesus, you can't help but want to talk about him because, you know, he's the love of your life. He is, you know, the, he is everything. So you, you just want to talk to people about Jesus, you know, and, and he is that living waters without that true vine. I can't, I can't be. And he's my bread of life. And I have to do this because, you know, he is, I, I want, I don't use the word drug. But, you know, without him, what are we? So I, I think it's pretty amazing what, what Stephen said. I didn't expect him to say all this. I just made these two slides up because I thought he was going to come with a laundry list, right? But, you know, it's so simple. It's just so simple. Know God, make him known. And then go set the goals to how you're going to achieve that. that. That's all it's about. But that is so in keeping also what he, what Stephen brought up about the gifts with what Pastor Jerry has been teaching over this time. Uh, tomorrow, uh, on this Saturday, 10 to 12, same Zoom link, you will learn how to be effective, learn to be a multiplier, be a fisher and fisher of men. And really, what is your default mode? You know, what is that gifting that the Holy Spirit has given you? Uh, I know I may not be saying it exactly the way that Pastor Jerry might say it. I, I'm saying it using my words, but he really has such a solid teaching on this. He's breaking down uh, all of this in, uh, from Greek to English for, for us, what the Holy Spirit has already given to you from the foundation uh, of, of, of the world before you were even formed. God already knew uh, what he, he would give you and what modality you are and therefore how you will be serving him in his kingdom, which piece of the jigsaw do you fit in such that when you're in there, the thing works and you work and you're happy and at peace and the yoke is very, very light and not heavy. Not like, oh my goodness, I got to do this and this and this. No, no, no. This not, it's not about works. It's about grace and about living out Jesus Christ in our life. 
And, and I think this is what Pastor Jerry is teaching, and I'm so excited to find his teaching. So it is about life leadership that as we live our life, we go make disciples. It's not about, I'm going to today go make disciples. No, no, no. Today I talk to the supermarket girl. I say, hey, you know what? God loves you. You smile. And then she looks at me. I say, your name is Ellen. Uh, Ellen Young. Young is a Hakka surname. And then she looked at me. I say, yeah, you know. And that's the first contact. So next time she cleans fish for me, she might remember me. Then I'll start telling her about Jesus. Which brings me to the next thing. Next week, guys, next week, we've got two wonderful ladies to teach us about street evangelism and how they do it. It's not about teaching you, but by showing you by example. Uh, one is Shirley, uh, who is, uh, uh, you know, a, a preschool teacher. But, you know, she's known around the whole of East Coast in Singapore. Everybody knows her because, you know what, everywhere she goes, she makes uh, people come to Christ. It's, it's just one amazing thing. And I, as I shared in the last uh, meeting that during COVID, you know, she used to write to me, I can't go out. What am I going to do? I got nobody to talk to about Jesus. I need to talk to somebody about Jesus, you know? And, and this is how much her passion is. And the other person is Wendy. Wendy is totally nuts, okay? We go to Israel and she's talking to the Jews about Jesus. And then my daughter is going, you know what Wendy's doing? She's there talking to the Jews about Jesus. She doesn't even know how to speak Hebrew. But that's Wendy, you know? And, and, and she's, she is very, very gifted in that. She'll be standing in the middle of nowhere in, in Germany and suddenly starting in the middle of a street corner and preach. My goodness, you know? That's this new for York. New York. <laughs> okay, we're bringing you on next, so you just hang on there, okay? Um, oops, sorry. Um, and then we're going to have, you know, on those dates, please record the dates. I will send it out to you guys, but so that you know. Everyone's talking about the end times. Uh, one of the churches in, in, uh, in, in Singapore organized a talk. A lot of people attended. But, uh, and, and that was a, a short one. But now we're really, uh, we got uh, Pastor John Brito to come teach us about this. And he's going to talk to us about the rapture, the signs, where's Israel, where's the Israel time clock. Uh, where are we in this, you know? And, and uh, those are the dates. And it is special because it'll be two hours each. So it's altogether six hours. And you will really be learning. And it's all scripture based, not just hearsay, but from scripture and interpretation of scripture. And what are the different interpretation and what is Pastor John's interpretation uh, from, from it? I mean, you may disagree, but I think there are some fundamentals and those fundamentals, we agree. So when I, when I asked him, I said, do you believe this and this? He says, yes. I said, right, the rest we can afford not to agree, but these are very fundamentals that we kind of like need to know and be agree in agreement on. So I hope you just lock those dates or take a photo of this so that you put it in your calendar because it is going to be a um, very good session. And then in October, we have uh, Marcus uh, come to teach us about um, uh, communicating with um, our, our cousins, basically. And uh, that, that is going to be also three, three sessions that will be a very, very good session to know how Jesus is mentioned in the Quran. Uh, who is Jesus in the Quran? Uh, why do they know about Jesus? And how come they actually expect Jesus to come back? You know, it's in the Quran, by the way. So, okay. So, thank you. Um, I am now going to play this song, which somehow didn't... Uh, and then we're going we're gonna to go... So no longer to linger, drawn by the world's delights. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have allured my sight. I will. You you can't hear it. You Nothing. guys can't hear it. No, it's it's good. It's, it's good. good. I can't hear. Somebody say they can't. I'll just say it again. Hear. You can hear. I it, can't right? hear. Okay, uh, who, who can hear, who can't hear? Never mind, I'll just finish it for those who can hear. I'll send it to you guys by WhatsApp. Okay, thank you. I am resolved no longer to linger, drawn by the world's delights. Things that are higher, things 
things that are nobler These have allured my sight And I will hasten to him Hasten so glad and free Jesus, greatest, highest I will come to Resolve to go to the Savior, leaving my sin and strife. He is the true one, He is the just one, He hath the words of life. And I will hasten to Him, hasten so glad I'm free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to Thee. I think that's a pretty awesome little song um, all about being resolved for Jesus. So it's getting late. Um, we usually have a short prayer uh, session. So that's Wendy. And Wendy will do the closing prayer for us uh, today. Uh, Wendy, I'm going to stop the share, then we can see you. Okay. I will right. now have to look for you, Wendy. So Wendy will come next week and she will tell us how she does her stuff. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Okay, where's your flower? <laughs> okay, what can you close this in there? Um, Thank right. You. Thank you for this time that we have uh, good sharing from Russ Steven and Norma that uh, conducted all this well i just ask that uh, we retain whatever parts that touched us in the lesson so that this time is um fruitful and uh, will not go to waste and that we actually act upon uh those parts that uh kind of remind us not to waste our days on earth uh and I just call out for um, even within our realm that we will motivate other Christians to move out and be concerned of the lost souls more than just you know their own because well we're, we're basically safe but the whole idea is really uh, having that passion for the lost just as Jesus did. So God, we just thank you and um, continue to bless us for a wonderful weekend ahead uh, and expect our days to be wonderful with you in it. Amen. Your mic is off. Norma, your okay. mic is off. Okay, okay, okay. I actually saw uh, Brother John uh, somewhere but we won't uh, bring him in. But, you know, when Brother Stephen was talking about the um, small people's group uh, out there, actually, uh, Brother John is going to be coming in later in the year to share about all these little groups in Pakistan and how uh, the work is going on in, in that uh, area. And I have actually also asked um, Pastor Go, you know, for those of you guys who may remember the Thai cave incident, uh, the young boy that was caught in the cave, I met him. Uh, I went to look for him because I wanted to bring him to Singapore that he can talk to the youths here because the young people here are killing themselves. And I wanted him to talk to the young people here to say, hey guys, stop killing yourself. There's always hope and you're stuck in a cave and you want to live, you want to live, you want to live. And I was going to bring Ardun here. And so I went up to uh, meet them in Northern Thailand. Now, both Ardun and his pastor, Pastor Go, are going to come here uh, onto this show to share about what happened in the cave and also how that ministry in Northern Thailand is uh, impacting uh, lives, you know, and, and, and the tribal people up in Northern Thailand. And, and, then, uh, and then we also have Pastor John sharing about the tribal uh, people in Pakistan 
and and of course you know uh, we we have other people sharing about India. So I I, I really hope you continue with uh, Acacia uh, because I think you know we 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 are really sharing a worldview. You know where where the world is and uh, what we all need to be doing. Not not just Pastor Jerry alone because he he does so much. But each one of us have our own circles of influence as leaders, and each one of us can do so much um, by by way of just reaching out. Supermarket person, the market person, the taxi person, the grab person, we can do it. And by just telling one more person about Christ, that person would have heard. So thank you, everyone. Uh, I will post um, all the dates and all that. I continue to keep people informed through the WhatsApp. So if you guys need to uh, be updated constantly, either join the Facebook page because it's an Acacia Mission Facebook page with the same logo, or you guys put the WhatsApp to me and I will uh, continue to keep you informed. And of course, everything that I do is on the backbone of Mox TV with Pastor Jerry. And he is always informed of uh, what we're doing, you know, and, and also for the changes he, he approved. So thank you, everybody. Uh, for your love. We won't have a prime ministry tonight because it's getting late. And love to all of you. Keep well and keep Thank talking you. about Jesus. Keep Amen. talking about Jesus. All right. Jesus. That's it. All you need to do. Bless him Amen. and talk about him. Up and Amen. out. Amen. Amen. Shalom to everyone. Shalom. 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 Thank you, Norma. Shalom. Shalom. Bye -bye, Thank, you, Norma. Thank, Thank you, you, Sister Norma. Thank you, Sister Norma. And Brother Norma. Steve. Yeah. Thank you. Thank God you, bless. Stephen. Hello. I learned bless. so much. God bless you all. So we'll be praying for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you bye guys. Bye-bye. For, bye -bye. for, for those of you, see you tomorrow on Mod CD. Tomorrow for Modalities. Yeah. Good night. Good night. To be disciple. Amen. Amen. Okay, bye bye, guys. God bless Norma. Bye bye. Okay, you guys have to leave so that Pastor Gary can rest. Hurry up, go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> he got to sleep, you know. Tomorrow, got to wake up so early. <laughs> yes. Please, go back, go back, Amen. go back, go back. Choo, 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 choo. Uh, Susan, <laughs> Juliet, bye bye. I love you. I'll be yeah. with you tonight. Bye, Norma. So you can ride. Can <laughs> Shalom. I can sleep. God bless. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm I'm like like people, yeah. okay. <laughs> I am going to close and Pastor can also close. close. <laughs> Bye, Pastor. See you tomorrow, Pastor. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Yes, Pastor Gerard. Good night. Bye. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Love you all. Love you all. God Bye. bless. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. Bye-bye.